it's Giannis. He's got to be the MVP he normally is in the regular season, right? That's what we've been lamenting in the playoffs. He hasn't been. And what I've pointed out is it's because he's a big. Stephen A pointed out initially. He's, he's really more of a, a five than a three. Okay, so he's a big. He plays that way. And what do I religiously say on this show? Even Kareem needed a guy on his level, Oscar or Magic. Otherwise, no chips. Even Shaq needed a guy on his level, Kobe or a prime D-Wade. Otherwise, no chips. That's what a big needs, a guy to get him the ball, a guy who can sh create his own shot, a, a partner in crime. Well, Giannis doesn't have that if he's facing a big three in Brooklyn. Middleton and Drew Holiday are not that compared to what KD has in Harden and Kyrie. But you take Harden and Kyrie out, all of a sudden, Middleton's the third best player in the series? That actually elevates Giannis. Now he has a crime partner at least better than what the other guys got. And that's what he has here, too. Who's the third best player in this series? Probably Chris Middleton. And by the way, who's the fourth, given the composition of this series, Stephen A., given the fact that Drew Holiday has a track record, not just of defense, but of locking down, in particular, smaller guards? So if you point to Trey Young, oh, they got Drew Holiday. He can't do better than that on a little guy. So that, once again, elevates Giannis's importance. He is the best player in this series, at least if you look at their regular season track records. He needs to be that guy in this series for them to win. He's the most important player. No, I don't believe that. I believe it's Trey Young. And the reason why I believe it's Trey Young, Max, is because uh, if Giannis just puts up a regular performance and the rest of the Milwaukee Bucks perform, Milwaukee's fine. Trey Young's holding their playoff hopes in his hands. He's got to be spectacular, not just as a scorer, but as a setup man for the other bodies. The Capellas of the world, the Collins of the world, the Herders of the world, all, all the others. Bogdanovich, of course. He's got to do it because that's their only hope. Outside of that, I see this series ended in five games. I think that Atlanta has surprised us. They didn't surprise us with the Knicks. They were the better team. I knew that. Uh, regardless of how I felt. But against the Philadelphia 76ers, to win games 1, 5, and 7 in Philadelphia, I did not anticipate that. They deserve a lot of credit for that. Um, and then you look at Milwaukee. Milwaukee's just a Goliath against them. They're just too big. When they want to be, they can be stout defensively. John is going downhill. They have absolutely positively no answer for that whatsoever. And on the defensive side of the ball with Trey Young penetrating into the seams of the defense, a key for them could end up being Brooks Lopez even more so than Giannis because what you have to do is somebody's got to stay at home to prevent those alley oops from you know, being caught by Capella. But in the end, what it comes down to is this. When you've got a Drew Holiday to defend, when you've got a Chris Middleton to defend, when you've got a P.J. Tucker to defend for you, all right, on the defensive side of the ball for the Milwaukee Bucks, um, you're going to need Trey Young to be the creator, the orchestrator. If he's not that floor general for you, Milwaukee does, uh, you know, the Hawks don't stand a chance. They don't have a chance at all. You have a chance without Giannis because of the other pieces at play, particularly when a guy like Middleton is capable of showing up for a game and dropping 39 for you the way that he did against Brooklyn. Okay, this guy proved to be a viable secondary option. Drew Holiday didn't even have a good series against Brooklyn, but he made some big shots down the stretch. P.J. Tucker can really, really defend, and he's given them a personality transplant that was so desperately needed. You can find a way to beat Atlanta with the Greek freak averaging 25 instead of 30 or being just a regular, ordinary, good talent instead of, in term, instead of the great one that he is. Trey Young absolutely positively needs to be great in order for Atlanta to have a chance in this series. Yeah, I don't know if they win if Giannis is only okay. You know, the thing about Giannis that makes him different than Ben Simmons from the last series, because they have certain things in common. Ben Simmons is more of a, an actual guard, has better handles and everything, an even better passer. So Giannis mm -hmm. is a good passer. But Giannis does not have, like, a psychotic problem shooting the ball. He's not a great shooter, but he will take a shot. And because he takes shots, he'll hit them three out of ten times from the outside. That makes him different than Ben Simmons. That's the reason the Bucs have a chance, provided other teams don't have stars with second and third bananas better than Middleton and Drew Holiday. So, no, Giannis's excellence is the reason you favor the Bucs here. If you, t if, if you make Giannis more like a Simmons who just won't shoot the ball, I probably like the Hawks. 
even with Middleton and Holiday. But Stephen A., if I take your point, I think it's a good point about what they need from Trey Young. He's got to play out of his mind for them have to have a chance to win. But even then, I would look to a different player as the most important in that case, and that would be Drew Holiday. We've seen Drew Holiday, well, first of all, not against big guards, smaller guards, Stephen A., you can't do better than that defensively. Well, first of all, let's understand something. Let's not let's not lie to the American public on, 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 on this morning, Max Kellerman. All my basketball points are good points. So that's number one. Let's just get that out the way make right a now. I don't make bad make points a about basketball. It's incredibly important, so thank you so much. That's number one. Number two, and more importantly, Max Kellerman, here's the deal. All of those things that we point out, we all understand this game, and we understand what Milwaukee's brought to the table because we've seen it. What I'm saying is what you've seen from Herder, what you Like, for example... Seth Curry is guarding Herter in Game 7. Clearly, Doc Rivers, you know, Danny Green being out, you got to find somebody else to put on Herter because Seth Curry was undersized. Who's undersized on Milwaukee? It's not P.J. Tucker. It, it, it's, 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 it's not Drew Holiday. It, it's, it's not Chris Middleton. There is no undersized. So think about the advantages, okay? You have a situation where you get to put a bigger guy on Trey Young at all times. You get to put a guy at least who's the size of a herder at all times. You look at a Collins. You look at a Capella. You got to deal with the Greek freak and Brooke Lopez down low. You got P.J. Tucker and how, and how, and how strong-willed he can be. That's a person that could guard Bogdanovich. That's a person that could guard herder himself. These kind of things that you have at your disposal on the defensive side of the ball, the only person that's capable – of taking advantage of it is a cat quick point guard who's so quick and so electrifying at times that he can ultimately facilitate for other guys to get them open shots. That's how you're going to have a chance well, to beat Milwaukee well, if right, you're Atlanta. But, but, Trey but Young is your only hope, really. But, Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.